Hello and welcome back to the Demis Helen channel. We're back with another Arpeggio video. This is the September edition. If you want to watch all of the other videos, you can check that on the playlist that's on screen now, but do that after this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at a little bit of a different way of creating an arpeggio. It's more probably classed as a melodic sequence, but it's still arpeggiated. So nonetheless, it can still be used and you can use it in your own productions as well. The usual format applies, which is a follow along. There's going to be no MIDI available. It's going to stick in your mind more if you're actually progressing through the tutorial by recreating it yourself at the same time. And then you can apply those techniques and skills to your own development when you make your own tracks. And if you have any questions about what you see in today's video, let me know in the comments. And with that said, let's get started. There we are, that's the melody that we're going to create. So let's jump into this MIDI clip I've already created. Scale Assistant is on and we've got it set to C major. So you can see anything that is in red is not in scale. And we're going to do something a little bit different today with that. So be sure to make sure you're following to understand why and how we've done this. And we're going to be creating something relatively simple still, but something that is memorable and catchy. And if you're into the key of C major, then this is going to be great for you, but you can transpose this into other keys if needed. So we're going to be using the first sound. So you can see here that we've just got this first sound there and there are some effects on the effects chain as well. If we just reopen that, somehow it closed. So we have got a few things going on there, but not to worry, this is focused on the MIDI. So jumping into the MIDI clip, we're going to start on C2 or D2, should we say, but in the C2 range. Let's just zoom this in and we're going to have an F and an E and I think that's going to be an octave higher. Okay, And we're going to have this sort of pace, I can't remember exactly where it was at, but that's starting to sound like it. And then we're just going to repeat that for the whole two bars. But relatively simple, let's just open up the filter as well so you can hear this open. And I'm going to bring this down one octave again. Okay, so we're going to copy that over and we're going to use the same logic and I'm going to transpose the whole thing up to A. And you can see this is automatically put them here in key as well on C and B. So you can see I'm using half steps here. So we've got a an F and an E, which is a half step as opposed to, let's say, an F and a D, which you can see is going to be one and a half steps. And in using half steps, we keep it a little bit more intimate or should we say more close knit together? Because if we start using a whole tone or a whole tone and a half tone, we're going to start separating it out a little bit too much. And at the beginning, I want it to be quite tight in the melody. It sounds great, but it doesn't quite have the effect of a half step. And obviously in this key, we have two half step areas. We have F and E and we have C and B. So you can see going up to the A, so moving that all up into A naturally just puts that into the C and B range, which is how that second part was created. And you can hear it's already starting to take direction. So moving on, let's move to this next bit. So this is now five and six, bar five and six of the melody. I'm gonna go down to F. But with this here, we're going to change this to an E and a G. So now we have more spacing, but it's going to sound a little bit more natural because it's starting to progress upwards and then open out at the same time. So I'm going to say that is an A. I might have memorized that incorrectly. Yeah. You can see it's starting to open up the melody, which is great. And then finally, we're going to have a C. And we're going to bring these back down to 
F and E. So you can see in both cases when we transpose these down with the melodic section at the top, you can see the bottom notes were actually in the right place, the top ones were out of key or not in the right place and you can see I've just moved these top ones to sort of mimic where it naturally wants to progress in the key. Okay, so we're just going to address the final part of this, which is at the end, you heard that there was a bit of a rise to the next note. So obviously next in key is going to be D, where we started the melody, but it's not going to sound right. And no matter where we go on the right key, not giving that same vibe. And what we're doing here is just sharpening the C. So we're taking it out of key, but we are just sharpening that C to make it roll back round into the first root note, which is D over here. So let's have a listen to that. As you can see, obviously sharpening that C gives it a bit more of a serious tone and ties it in nicely back to D. Now, how did I do that? Forgetting all theory, just use your ears. If it works, it's going to work. If it sounds really wrong, then you're obviously not going to do it. So I'm going to lengthen all the notes. So now we've got eighth notes instead of sixteenth. And I'm just going to jump in and turn off LFO tool just so we don't get any pumping. So for now, we're going to leave that as it is, and we're going to focus on doing the bass. So we're going to focus on the first part, because it is just repetition all the way across the screen. So let's get to our rolling bass here. So we're just filling in the gaps. It's the usual technique that I do. And obviously, we're just going to mimic the bass notes here. So we're going to have D here and D there. And if we just look at where those notes are fallen, you can see I'm just filling the gaps. So yeah, this is overlapping, but the next 16th is free, essentially. So we've got a bit of a roll in there, and then we've got the first note here. Then we can see we've got a two note gap, and then we've got a one note gap here. So I'm going to bring these across. Should have just done them together. And bring that one across. So now we have... All right, so it's a little bit too low, so I'm going to transpose everything up. I think I actually did start here, so the melody is a lot higher and it gives room for the bass. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to bring that across to here and copy it because it is identical in every way. And that copies that over there. And then we can just copy that for each bar. Obviously going along, keeping and maintaining the same position, 1 16th in, so you're not starting at the beginning of the bar. We can drag that to A. We can drag that to F. And then we can put that onto C and we can sharpen the C for that last part. So now we have a complete sequence. So that melody is sitting far too high. So I'm going to make them a little bit closer. Much better. Not losing any character here. All right, so we can make this more interesting. You can start going in with the velocities and we've covered this before. So let's just quickly demonstrate what I mean by this. So hopefully you can hear the difference there. We've got more of a rounded rolling feel there, whereas this is just hitting at the same velocity every time, same volume, and it's kind of disorientating. So having a bit of movement in your bass using the velocities to change the levels gives you a little bit more of a roll. Let's just randomly do this all the way across here for these. So I'm just going to randomly draw in. I'm holding shift just to draw them notes, otherwise you are going to manipulate all of them. It's a little bit disorientating and there's only a minute amount of velocity change in this particular preset so don't worry too much about that you can edit that I'll show you that in a second. So I'm just going to get rid of these and redraw them in. We could have done this before moving them all but 
that you live and learn on those ones. Right, so there we are, we have our base in, it is moving, but if we take a look at the actual preset here, and just to mention, these are coming from my Serum Trans Essentials Volume 2, exclusive to my loops. link is in the description if you want to go and check that out if you don't already own it. So we can adjust the velocity here, and if we go into the matrix on this, let's just scroll down, it's been a while since I've looked at these. All right, so we don't have any sort of regulated volume or velocities on that, so we're going to choose velocity here, and we're going to choose global master amp. Let's just have that at, say, 30 for now. It's very crudely done, we've just done it to the global amp, but if you wanted to do it on the cutoff and say the envelope filter and stuff like that, that will also generate some interesting results. And with that done, these top notes, I'm not a fan of them being too long, so you can hear that they actually are shorter in the original from the beginning of the video, so I'm going to bring them to a 16th. And what we're going to do to make the bass pop a little bit more, so I'm going to open the filter. Bass just blends and rolls a little bit too much into a bit of a sort of muddy blur. So I'm going to turn off quantize by hitting J and I'm going to bring these in. Suddenly we have a much more syncopated style and it takes the focus away from the bass and puts it back with the melody and the bass is kind of giving a bit of drive on top of the basses that you'll already have. So that way we're making the focus go back to this melodic sequence that is not highlighted above. And that just keeps more focus on that and keeps everything nice and clean. And you can also put this layer, this bottom layer on a separate track with the same sound. So you have independent control. And that way, when you're editing the melody section, you can make that nice and super clean, but the sort of lower notes you can process differently if you need to. And I do advise that because it is better, especially in trance. And there we have it. We can just copy that down to our second track, which is a pluck also from Serum Trance Essentials Volume 2. And together, and together with all of this, I'm just going to put FR2 back on here, side chain. And there we are, we have a completed trance arp. That is the September edition. If you've missed any of the previous videos, like I said at the beginning, you can check the playlist in the description and it was on screen at the beginning of the video. So you can check out all the other ones and have a mess around. Some are progressive trance, some are 138 trance. So you can kind of mix and match and learn the ones that you like. So meaning if you want a super fan of this particular melody, you can check out the other ones as well. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you have any comments about what you've seen in today's video, let me know, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.